Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. And motors and blowers. Welcome to a new episode involving my new Z225 John Deere Zero Turn that I got for free. 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 That's right, free. It's been sitting in my driveway for a couple of days, and uh, I got to do one of two things: remove the deck so I can get started on, you know, fixing up this rot and rusted stuff with a welder. And also at the same time cleaning it up because there's so much grass and mulched leaves all over the place that has hardened up over the uh, time that it's been sitting in the guy's garage. And um, I gotta just try to clean it up. Also, as you know, this engine is blown. The reason why I got it for free, he just gave it to me. I have another engine that I'm gonna repurpose for this. And uh, eventually I'm gonna have to remove the engine and I suspect there's a uh, blown connecting rod and a hole in the block because he said that once it blew, a ton of oil spilled out. So I do have to remove the engine, but I'd like to first remove the deck so I can kind of get it repaired and also it's easier to move around and also clean up. So I'm gonna jack this up, I guess in the front and try to remove the deck and see what kind of condition the deck is in. I know that there's some gaping holes in it, so we're gonna have to get some sheet metal and uh, a stick welder and try to repair it and then repaint it. It was super easy to remove the deck. One of the easiest decks I've ever removed. It's only a three point connection. Here, here, and this front bar. Three of, three of these uh, R clip type things. And then you just take the belt and roll it off of the uh, electric clutch on the rear. Super easy. Two front levers. One lever on the right hand side is for up and down height adjustment on the deck. The left one up and down is for um, an emergency brake. So you have to have it on brake before you can start the engine. That's one of the safety switches. The two levers over here is to control left and right to turn and also forward and reverse. So pretty straightforward. Uh, I tried to turn the um, flywheel over here and it's locked up with the electric clutch. And of course it's starting to rain. Uh, I found this near the battery compartment. It's a file. <laughs> scores this was all filled up to the top with water and I just took this thing and I cleared this area here there's a hole and all the water leaked out so it was just stuffed up with a lot of crap battery has been charging for two days now I put a desulfator on it still hasn't finished completely charging but I think the battery is up to a point where you could try to start it and of course it's starting to rain again so it's like the minute I walk out here, it wants to rain. I just checked the gas, there's no gas in there. Just checked the dipstick, there's no oil in it because the engine's blown and a lot of oil came out is what he said. Look at all the crap that's in between the uh, pulleys and stuff of the deck. I'm gonna try to clean it up a little bit, get rid of the crap, and that way we can see if that big gaping hole there is the only big gaping hole. I wanna check out the damage of this deck and see whether or not it's salvageable. I mean, honestly, it has to be salvageable because getting a deck for a zero turn is not exactly the easiest thing to get. So that's less than ideal. Uh, started to hail, believe it or not. So I got the deck over there. Um, you know, there's there's some pretty big gaping holes in there uh, under the pulley mostly, and uh, you know nothing 
really uh, too difficult. If I take off some of those pulleys, I'll have a clean shot at, you know, it's just some flat sheet metal and weld it over the holes. It's not terrible. I'm going to let the rain clean it up a little bit. We'll come out here again and uh, try to remove that engine when it's nicer out. Hey guys, so it's the next day. Got my uh, stick welder and flux core welder. And after the rain that we got, um, it's a little bit cleaner, <laughs> I guess. I sprayed a little bit of um, super clean on here. But anyway, so it reveals this. We've got a pretty big hole there. We've got some there. And of course, we've got this surrounding arc, this rounded part there where it usually is uh, rusted. And then behind this big tensioner pulley here, pretty big hole right there. But I think what I'm gonna do is remove this tensioner arm so I can have a clear shot at, you know, putting a big piece right there. I've got uh, some um, leftover sheet metal from this cannibalized um, fender from the first carcass of crap tractor and I'm just going to use that and grind this clean with a grinder cut pieces to fit and then stick weld it together Okay, it's going pretty well. Uh, my welds are getting much better. I know for professional welders, you're thinking, what are you, crazy? Trust me, this is good for me, okay? <laughs> anyway, it's, it's getting there, you know? It's kind of fun, too. While I was doing that, I heard these noises. Holy shit! My um, small shed from the backyard blew up over this fence i have no idea how and it landed on my neighbor steve's mini driveway pathway here to the backyard and miracle it didn't break his window <laughs> i'm amazed how this flew over this fence and these bushes and didn't break his window how is that possible oh my god i'm so lucky but how would I ever get something like this back over there again without taking it apart? Anyway, I got to work this out because the wind is still blowing tremendously. And uh, I'm by myself, so there's no way I can get it over there. Man, oh man. Another shed bites the dust. Look at that. Look at that. How did that fly over uh, a five foot or six foot fence and not hit his window? You know what? I think those garbage cans blocked it. I bet you that saved it. But uh, the wind is still blowing really hard. I'm gonna have to try to get this uh, through that door. Do you think I can get, the, get it through the door without taking it apart? Uh, I'm gonna try. sides off it was just a disconnect thing I mean it's too windy to even me for me even putting it up right now there's no point so I want to wait until tomorrow back to the project at hand
Look at that, guys. That thing is solid now. Looks like hell. <laughs> but uh, I took pieces of that fender, cut it into pieces, banged it to match, curvature, clamped some stuff. Just went to town. I probably used like 10 electrodes. So how about it, fellas? We patched up this Swiss cheese deck. Deck had a million holes and gaping cracks in it and stuff. And uh, it took a long time. I mean, it was a lot of work, but uh, you know, I like welding. <laughs> Not that I'm any good at it, but the more you practice, a little better. You get a little better every time you practice. Uh, I, I don't think I could ever get really good, but um, this is uh, leaps and bounds better than what I used to do. You know, big blobs of stuff. I'm not saying there's no blobs, but uh, the, the welds are cleaner now, and I, I didn't even clean it up. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even grind it down. I'm just going to paint over it, <laughs> but this deck is solid now. It had these... Um, pieces that are curved you know from the fender that are naturally curved and I just bent it a little bit to make it fit and probably five or six pieces all the way around like that and uh, this was like three or four pieces you just had to you know close up the holes and uh, it looks terrible but <laughs> when you paint it all yellow and stuff this will be a working functioning deck believe me it's solid uh, you could step on it and jump on it and everything and it's solid really so, um, you know, it's a lot of work, but it's not like I could get one of these decks off of a uh, zero-turn John Deere just lying around somewhere, you know what I mean? It's expensive, even if you can find it, and you can't find it. So what's different now that I've put it back? Well, I have two lawnmowers and I have the wheels sitting over the bottom post. So if this wants to lift up, it's gotta take the lawnmowers with it. See, how I parked the two wheels on top of the post on the bottom. Also, I have these bungee cords holding the scooter down on the top post and there and here. And so if this wants to lift up, it's got to pull all these things up too. That ought to do it. I hope. Hey guys. So it's the next day. Today I'm going to take the engine out of here. I just jacked it up. And you know what's really annoying? Is that I just cannot find my other jack stand. It's a little sketchy. Because I told you this, this damn uh, jack doesn't really work. After a while, it starts to droop down. It's losing its hydraulics. Anyway, I'm just gonna show you real quick what it looks like down here. There's the hydrostatic transmission with the two hydro pumps on the left and right side. This is an electric clutch that's gonna be hard to get off. And even harder is the drive belt on top of it. Usually it's gonna be really difficult to take off. Also, because the engine is blown, there's a lot of there was a lot of oil that leaked out and so it's covered in soot and oil as you can see this area hasn't been cleaned in years i'm not going to get under it because huh, i don't have a death wish it looks like four five eight bolts to release the engine also the muffler is one of those connections where if you just pull upward it'll come out of the muffler i doubt the engine i'm going to put in here is going to be able to uh, fit exactly so I'm gonna probably remove this muffler as well might be easier if I took this rear grill off but we'll see how it goes I'm gonna try to loosen this where is it that and inside there is another one uh, we'll see if I can loosen them okay I was pretty lucky got the bolts out relatively easy 
cleaned out that area a little bit. Look at all the crap that was in there. Oil soaked grass. Anyway, uh, when I took it out, the um, electric clutch came right out. And then this almost fell on my head, <laughs> the drive pulley. So I think I loosened everything up and uh, I figured I was gonna try to not take this uh, grill off, but then moving the more heavier uh, V-twin back in there would probably be a pain. So I think I should just remove it, make it easier for myself. Hey, that was a pain. A lot of stuff to disconnect. Fuel line, throttle, <laughs> wiring harness. Pain. Stator, uh, voltage regulator. There we go. Removal of the original engine. I'm interested in seeing how badly it's damaged. So there it is right there. It's uh, nice and wide open, actually. Pretty easy to, you know, work on because it's a lot of space. But when you shove in a V-twin, it's going to be a much larger displacement engine. So you're going to have less room. And also, you're not 100% sure whether or not this... Uh, Harness will fit, probably will, looks like it. I don't know what that is. It's kind of a screw. Scores! And uh, here's the uh, cable to the battery, to the starter. There's a ground cable here. Hmm, where did that go? Oh, that was on one of the engine mounting bolts right here. And uh, this one over here is to the electric clutch. It's a lot of connections. One, two, three, four, five. Five connections, also the fuel line, throttle cable, muffler. I have a feeling I might have to remove this muffler assembly here because it's probably not going to fit because the uh, V-twin has dual pipes going down like this. So this bracket may have to be moved to the center somehow. Or I'll just weld the exhaust pipes to the muffler so that it just hangs there. In the meantime, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. It's just disgusting. As you saw, I cleaned everything up. I feel much better now. You have to clean up your, your area. I just tested the battery. It's been charging for about five days with a desulfator on it. And after testing it, it still shows, it shows 100% charged. However, it only shows 33% healthy. You guys may or may not recall when I first got this, I tested it with the same machine and it showed zero health and zero uh, charge. So now at least it's 100% charged and it does seem like it's about um, 13, 12.82 volts. I mean, I guess it'll sort of hold the charge, but not really. So I kept the, the sulfator on it and it'll drain the battery from it being used. And then I'll recharge it again with the, the sulfator on for as long as I'm still working on this, just to give it the best chance, you know, but 33% at 12.8 volts should start and crank the, the, the engine, you know what I mean? Uh, I haven't turned on my water pipes yet, and uh, I need to do that because it's today it's 58 degrees, and it's gonna be like 70 next week. So, I mean, I don't know, will it, will it freeze? Will it go below 32 degrees again and freeze up my water pipes? Because I would like to power wash this thing. Maybe I can use uh, my neighbor Steve's water supply. But anyway, 
that's today's uh, video. Uh, removing the engine, kind of cleaning it up. It really didn't give me that much trouble because the electric clutch and the drive pulley came right off really easy. Uh, a lot of stuff to take apart back here because of the brackets and the thing that holds the muffler and all. And um, also this putting um, fix a flat on this one seems to have worked. It, it's holding air. And also welding the deck. The deck took the longest time, probably five hours or so, but had a really good time doing it. You know, every time I do it, I feel like I'm getting better, but it does, doesn't show from the results. I mean, it is a little better. There's no big, huge blobs like I used to do, but uh, you know, we'll get some yellow paint sometime in the future and uh, clean that up after a power wash. And then we'll repaint that yellow and we'll be able to install it after I put the engine on. So stay tuned for the uh, episode three of this project. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh that's great. I got that on video. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.